Okay, so today we're going to be talk. First, Justin's going to be talking about the tech internships uh, with a focus on Okia, and then I'll be talking about math camps, and then after that we'll do a small Q and A. So, Justin, do you want to introduce yourself and then talk about tech internships? Yeah, sure. So I'll be starting off with tech internships, as Eric already said. So my name is Justin, and I am a student at Maryville High School in the IB program. And uh, last summer, I participated in the Nokia Future Tech Internship. So yeah, I'll just introduce you to a couple of internships, uh, have a greater focus on Nokia's internship, and also give a few tips on how you can maximize your chances to getting accepted. So Eric, if you would go to the next slide. All right, so first of all, let's talk about some examples of internships. Now there are a lot of, um, there are many internships, right? These are just a few that I've listed here. Uh, there are a few that I've been, I've uh, been familiar with. And also it seems that these are also the more popular ones. So first of all, Nokia Future Tech, uh, essentially, you're just hired to work at Nokia in small teams, and uh, you get to work on different projects. Uh, you're normally split into groups of uh, one person, occasionally two, and uh, you are assigned different tasks. Like maybe you will design a website, maybe you're going to look at processing log files, or maybe you're going to look at managing network configurations. Uh, and this program is only for grade 11s. I should also mention most internships are only for grade 11s or grade 12s. So if you know, you're not in grade 11 or grade 12, unfortunately, you're not going to have as many opportunities. Uh, and for this internship, you can start applying sometime, I believe, in February. Uh, next, we also have RBC Summer Tech Lab. So this is also similar to Nokia, where you're hired in small teams to solve challenges and problems faced by RBC. And similarly, it's only for grade 11s and 12s. Uh, actually, it's a bit different because grade 12s can also go to this internship. Uh, and for this one, you want to apply by March. Finally, we also have Queens High School Internships in Computing. So this one's uh, different from the last two in that you're not working at some tech company anymore. You are doing research with professors or graduate students. Uh, and you also get to live on campus at Queen's, so you get to, you know, kind of try out the uh, university life. So this one's also only for grade 11s and 12s. So uh, now let's talk about why you should apply to internships. So if we could go to the next slide. So why would you apply? So first of all, the most valuable thing is that internships give hands-on experience on what you can expect uh, when you go for post-secondary education or a job in a technology-related sector. You can first-hand experience what types of jobs you can expect to do in the future. So you know early whether you really want to continue to pursue technology in the future rather than after you've already spent several years studying or several years working. So basically, it can be a huge time save to know what you really want to do in the future. You also get to experience what an actual work environment feels like, such as working in a team or having meetings. For me personally, after experience what kind of things we do in a tech industry at Nokia and what an office work environment feels like, I have a clear idea of what kind of things, what kind of career I want to go down in the future. Additionally, internships are a great look on your resume because many internships are very competitive. For example, Nokia Future Tech Internship only accepts around 20 students out of the many that apply. So internships can really distinguish your resume from others. In addition, as mentioned before, internships provide hands-on experience and actual work environment. That means when you're looking for co-ops or jobs in the future, since you already have experience, uh, you you're going to have an edge over other applicants who don't have any experience at all. Another benefit about internships is that you can learn stuff that isn't related to the school curriculum, stuff that you won't ever learn in school. After all, in school, you don't work for some tech company, right? So obviously, you can expect to learn a lot that you would never normally learn in your average CS class. For me, uh, in my internship, I learned a new language called Bash. Uh, I learned 
uh, the importance of log files and how to process and manage them, and also exploratory data analysis, which I would have never learned if I just stayed in my school and only took uh, my CS classes. And another great thing is that you get to meet new people. So first of all, you're likely to meet other high school students who also have an interest in technology. So since you have a common interest, most likely you can make a couple of new friends. You can also form connections of actual employees, which would be very beneficial if you ever wish to work there again. And finally, uh, the people working at those internships have a lot more experience than you. They're adults. They've worked in the tech industry for several years, some for many, many years. So they have much more experience and can be very helpful in guiding your future path. And finally, uh, maybe one of the biggest benefits about internships, you get paid, right? It's, you know, a job. You get paid money. All right. So... Now let's talk about the application process. So the application process for each internship is different, but um, since there's a lot of people applying, every application, uh, at every internship, when they're looking at your applications, they want uh, your application, they want a reason to look at your application. So that means you have to distinguish yourself in your application. You know, properly show that you are different from everyone else. Why should they be considering you for the internship? Why should you be picked over the next person? So there are some ways to do this. For one, uh, you could keep a detailed resume. So the more a company knows about you, then the more that you can seem different from others. And many, uh, when you're applying to an internship, most of the time they're going to ask you for a resume. So having a detailed resume about you know what experiences you have, what accomplishments you have, it is a perfect opportunity to distinguish yourself from other applicants. And uh, assuming you can get an interview, another opportunity to further distinguish yourself from other applicants uh, is that during the interview, it becomes much more apparent on what kind of a person you are since you're talking face to face. So for example, maybe you are extremely persistent and meticulous with your work. Maybe you have a lot of enthusiasm towards challenges. Now, these kind of things you can't really show in a resume or some like document, but uh, during the interview, it's the perfect opportunity to introduce more of uh, these kinds of things. And uh, finally, this part isn't too important to distinguishing yourself, but you should study some computer science. So many tech internships expect at least some coding experience. So this is very important. For example, the RBC internship I mentioned earlier has a small coding test that you need to pass. So it, it would be a good idea to uh, you know, take one CS course or something before uh, concerning to apply to that internship. So next slide. Okay, let's talk more specifically about Nokia Future Tech because, you know, that's the internship that I applied to. So uh, the application process for this internship is actually very unconventional. Uh, because instead of a resume or something, all you need to do is send a report card and a one minute video. And the report card actually isn't a big part of this at all. Uh, according to the admission officers, all they care is that you have an above 70 average. So so the report card part, is, there's not much to stress there. Um, so essentially you are completely judged based on your video. So the thing you want to stress about is that one minute video. You need to make the most of it. So before I talk more detail about this video, the good thing about Nokia's internship program is that you don't actually need any coding experience. So I have, uh, I personally know someone who got into this program who before, uh, attending this internship barely knew how to program. So uh, the tech related project that this one minute video has to be about, it, it has to be barely related to tech. You can do something like graphic design for a website that has no programming at all. And you can submit that as your project and it will be accepted just fine. So now for the video. So Nokia is going to ask you to demonstrate that tech related project, but they don't actually really care too much about it. In fact, during the interview, 
they'll probably ask for more details of the project then. So during your video, you don't really have to get into the specifics of your project. And you also don't have much time either because you only have one minute. That's not a lot of time at all. What's important is that you demonstrate as much as yourself as possible, because what really makes you different isn't the project that you work on. It's um, it's who you are, essentially, right? A lot of people have projects on, like, I don't know, making games or, like, uh, programming some website or whatever. There can be a lot of projects that are similar. However, if you are if you're able to show that you are a completely different person from the other people in a good way, then they're for sure going to remember you like that. So they're for sure going to pay more attention to your application. So I recommend that during the video, uh, you take 10 at the very most 20 seconds explaining your project, what it does, whatever. And then you want to explain the challenges you faced uh, or how you overcame those challenges, how you develop as a person from your project. For example, in my video, I think I used like two or three sentences at most talking about my project. It was just a brief mention. And then I proceeded to just talk about how uh, what I learned from my project, how I enthusiastically approached my work, how I overcame challenges and frustrations that I felt, and how I was able to develop my perseverance and commitment. So essentially, you want to talk more about what you learn uh, about yourself rather than the actual project. Now, another thing is um, to make your video different, your video can't be boring. So if you just record yourself talking for an entire minute, uh, the people watching your video aren't going to be very happy. They're probably going to get bored because they have a lot of videos to watch. So that doesn't mean, you know, like make your uh, video some crazy cinematic. It doesn't have to have too much editing. For me personally, in my video, all I did, I just recorded myself talking, put it in a corner, and then had a video of my project demo. And then like that, uh, not only do I have to spend less detail on my project because, well, the people watching the video can see it, but, you know, it's not like a super boring video anymore. There's some people who uh, I've seen some videos. Uh, you can actually probably find some uh, application videos on YouTube, in fact. But some videos have crazy editing in them. It's not necessary, but um, if you look at them, you can also see why those videos got in, right? With a lot of editing, it's more likely that whoever's watching is going to remember it, and that increases your chances of being you know, accepted. Uh, right, so that's essentially my tips for uh, your application to Nokia Future Tech. Uh, and that'll be it for the tech section of this presentation. Uh, I saw some people do have some questions, but um, I, they're, they're, uh, yeah, I saw a question, but we have a Q&A session at the very end of the presentation, so I'll just hold it until the end. So thank you for your patience. Now we'll be moving to the math part. So Eric? All right, so now I'll be talking a bit about some math camps. I'll also talk a bit about some camps that aren't really complete math camps, but uh, they are still STEM camps that are somewhat related to math. Most of these camps are in the U.S., by the way. Uh, but yeah, so first I'll talk about why we sh you should apply. So uh, math camps are really great because you get to learn about high level math and get a good, um, get a good feeling for what pure math is like. You also get to meet a lot of amazing and smart people and it looks good on college apps because like a lot of these top colleges like Stanford, Harvard, MIT, they really like seeing these sort of camps like maybe Ross or Promise and I'll talk about some more later. Um, because like I said before, you learn about high level math and it's like a lot of pure math, right? So it's a lot of like what you would learn as a math major in your first, second and third years. So it's kind of like a good indication that you're ready for university so that they know that you'll succeed. Um, you'll also get to experience dorm life before college because many of these are on university campuses and you'll live a similar life to a college student. So there'll be more on all of this later. We'll talk more about each of these parts in depth later. So first I'll talk about some camps, some math camps, to be specific. 
so the kind of like the preliminary one is awesome math so this is a virtual math camp which is targeted towards younger students probably in like grades 9 10 8 and even lower maybe even grade 7 this one is focused on competitions which you'll see isn't really a trend among the later camps um but yeah so if you're trying to prepare for competitions like you want to do well on like the COMC or the AMC or the AMI Awesome Math is a really good program that'll help you improve and you can learn a lot about competition math that'll help you later on it's also I'd rec if you're in like if you're currently in grade nine or you're currently in grade like eight I'd recommend that you apply to Awesome Math because it's really hard to get into some of these later camps. So next I'll talk a bit about Ross. So Ross is mostly number theory and this isn't really like contest or competition number theory. It's more like college level number theory. So something that would be like a first year number theory course, right? Um, so Ross is personally the camp that I went to twice, first as a first year and then as a junior counselor. It's a really good program. You learn a lot about, like I said, number theory, but there's also some more advanced lectures. I'll go more into depth about this one later. There's PROMIS, which stands for something like Program for Mathematic Young Students. I don't know the full name, it's long, but most people just know it as PROMIS. This one also has a focus on number theory. In fact, PROMIS was founded by Ross alumni so that's they're kind of similar and then there's math camp more specifically it's called canada usa math camp this one's varied it's like there's a choice so you basically get there and then i'm pretty sure what there's like a mentor and then you choose like you can do studying like real analysis or like topology or number theory it's not like cons as constrictive as to what you learn and then the last one is SUMAC, which stands for some Stanford University Mathematics Camp. Now, this one either has a focus on number theory or topology, depending on which one you choose. And out of these later four, this is the only one that can be done virtually. All these other ones have to be done in person. So these are some other really good camps that aren't math. So the first one is called SSP. SSP is a stands for Summer Science Program. It's a really good and prestigious program for science. And it you either study astrophysics, biochemistry, or genomics. Um, the next one is called SPARK. So this one is an a camp with a focus on engineering. Um, I've heard good things about this one. I don't know too much about it myself because personally, my focus is math. And then there's this last one called QSIS, which stands for Qu Quantum School for Young Students. It has a focus on quantum mechanics and computing, and I'll be talking a bit more about this one later because I went to this one as well. Um, there's also a lot of them on MIT's website. If you just search up MIT summer programs, it'll list their summer programs and a bunch of other good summer programs. So if you want to learn more about some other summer programs that maybe not be listed here, go ahead there at the end of this presentation and you can take a look. So now I'll be talking about my experience at camps and a bit more on why you should apply. So first of all, the learning. Camps are obviously great learning experiences. You're spending like a good portion of your summer, like four to six weeks, just learning one subject. So a lot of this, the material that you'll learn is not what you'd learn in school at all. So it's typically university level material. And it's not, for math camps, it's not about contests either for most camps. Like Ross was in-depth and axiomatic thinking so basically what it was, it wasn't like your typical contest number theory, right? It's more like talking about how do you build up number theory? Like how do you learn number theory from the bare axioms? If you don't know what that means, that's fine. You'll learn it if you apply. And yeah, so this one's if you do like number theory and advanced lecture, if you do like number theory, I would recommend going to Ross. I personally really enjoyed it. Um, but yeah, so learning although a lot of these camps do have a focus like ross has a focus on number theory promise has a focus on number theory as well sumac might have a focus on number theory or topology all of these camps most of these camps typically do have some sort of like advanced lectures like ross had advanced lectures typically for junior counselors and counselors with other various topics like you may not recognize these terms but there was one on like elliptic curves 
There is one on Erhard theory, and there is one on like prime producing polynomials. I also, so the other one I want to have a focus on is QSIS because I went here this summer as well. QSIS is good and similar to MathCamps, it does have a lot of lectures. In fact, it even has more lectures than Ross because Ross's focus is a lot on problem sets and self-pivoted, self-directed learning. But QSIS has a lot of lectures, but also something that was really good and you kind of unique to QSIS is that there's a lot of fun experiments and a lot of like hands-on learning compared to math camps because it's obvious it's a science right compared to math so there's a lot of like experiments that you can do to test these sort of quantum mechanic principles and even some algorithms and then the last one i want to talk about is the awesome math summer program i went to this one in grade nine i did two sessions one in number theory and one in geometry awesome math is really good for like preparing you for contests i found that it did help and it did i did learn quite a bit um but if in terms of like helping with college applications it's definitely not as good as like ross or like Cromies. so now i want to talk a bit about residence because this is another big part of camps so residence is like dorm living on a college so it may be something that you're not used to and it may be something that you're nervous about, but it's real actually a good experience to like kind of prepare for college life because this way it'll be easier to transition into the whole sort of dorm living away from home for an extended period of time before you actually get to college. So it's kind of like a warm up, if you will. But honestly, personally, I found residents like living on campus very fun because like you make a lot of new friends at these camps right because you're spending a lot of time with them and then you meet these new people that are really great residents it, living on residence in a campus kind of lets you like you're spending even more time with these friends so typically your time at the dorm is going to be fun you'll be hanging out with your friends or whatever and it'll it be it's just a really good experience and it also helps it's also a good way to meet and befriend and get closer to people. And then, oh yeah, I might, forgot to mention this, but most of these camps are on some sort of university campus. So Ross had two locations, one at like Rose Holman Institute of Technology and one at Otterbein University. And then like Sumac is obviously at Stanford. Promise is at Boston University. I don't know where math camp is, but yeah, most of these have some sort of like campus at some university. Now I wanted to talk about the people that you'll meet at camp. So meet, I found that like one of the best parts, if not the best part of all, is meeting people at these camps because you're meeting a lot of like-minded people. So a lot of these people are going to share the same interest with you. Because like if you're going to a math camp, then obviously you're really interested at math and everybody there is interested in math. So you already have like a common interest to build a relationship off of, right? So you'll meet also meet like make a lot of new friends here and then a lot of these friends are gonna last for a long time and then uh, you'll get really close with them over these like couple four to six weeks and then hopefully stay in touch even after that also i found that at these camps a lot of these people are really smart especially at ross because like at ross are almost like somewhat close to like half the people there were like usamo qualifiers because like it's it's a pretty hard camp to get into right so once you get there you'll meet a lot of really smart and cool people who i don't know maybe you'll meet them in the future like once you go to university or something because like yeah so it's also a really good way to make connections like at QSIS, for example um i got a funny thing is i got a, actually got a lot of people linked in that was kind of like a joke we had there where Everybody would always ask for each other's LinkedIn's. And then, yeah, so it's a good way to like make connections with people you might meet and be working with in the future, especially if you're going to like some sort of similar to like with a tech internship, you might meet these people again later in like some sort of company. It's like, especially if you do decide to actually go into academia with math, the whole academic math academia community is really small. So then it's not a very big like community compared to like physics or whatever. So you'll probably meet some of these people in the future. And then I also wanted to talk about activities at these camps. So something that may put off people from going to these camps is that like 
you may look on the website and it says like, oh, there's a lot of workload. Be prepared to do a lot of work. Like I know personally, when I was applying to Ross, it said like a lot of your waking hours will be spent doing problems and going to lectures. And at first I was like, well, that seems kind of like hardcore, right? But it's like, it's not actually that stressful. Like it's really fun because like in addition to like doing problems and going to lectures, there's lots of like activities that are organized by the camp. So for example, this year at Ross, every single night, we, uh, some counselors brought us to the football field and we played ultimate Frisbee for like one and a half hours before we went back to dorm for curfew. And then, yeah, so there's a lot of these fun activities. Also, there's like fun workshops and the lectures itself, in my opinion, were very interesting. I had fun going to them. Um, there are also some like celebrations and outside activities throughout the camp. Like for Ross, for example, during the 4th of July, the whole camp gathered and we had like a campfire and ate s'mores. It was just really fun. And then like for QSIS, that example, for example, we went to halfway through the camp, we went to Niagara Falls and we looked at the falls and like went to the surrounding like attractions and fun activities. And for Ross as well, we like went outside to eat sometimes like once like at the once at the end of camp, we went outside to eat. Another time we went outside to a local movie theater to watch a movie. And then, yeah, so it's not all work. It's these camps are designed so that they're really fun. OK, so now I'm going to talk about applying to these camps. And while applying, I might talk about applying. I might go in depth a bit more about what these camps are like. So first of all, the Ross Mathematics program, in my opinion, out of all the application ones, out of all the math applications, this one's really unique because a lot of math, a lot of math camps have like 10 problems on their application. Ross only has three. And these three problems are kind of different from the other ones you'll see. These three problems are all number theory related. Obviously, Ross is a number theory camp. But one key thing is that they're not like contest math. It's a lot more exploration. And it's almost even giving you a taste of what math research is like. It tells you to like make your own conjectures in a way. And it asks like a kind of vague question. And you're left to interpret that on your own and draw your own conclusions. I found one extremely important thing, like I can't stress this enough, is that you need to show your work and your motivation. These camps, honestly, I don't think they care that much if you get the right answer. Like that's good, but what they really wanna see is your mathematical thinking. They wanna see how you approach a problem, how you think about it, and they wanna see if you have the ability to think critically in order to work towards solving that problem and that you're not giving up because the math, maybe you'll learn it at the camp later. What they want to see is that you're willing to learn and that you have this like sort of, you develop this critical thinking and this these problem solving skills. So my general recommendation with all of these is that you write down anything, any work that you do and like anything that you come up with, even if it's not a complete solution, write it all down, write down any conjectures, any small lemmas, any propositions that you might have proven. So promise is 10 problems with ascending difficulty. And now this is different from Ross because first of all, it's 10 problems. Second of all, it's not only number theory. Promise is a lot of variety. So there's some geometry, there's some algebra, there's some combinatorics, and there's some number theory. The promise problem set is more like contest math. So it's more like you'll see when, if you do the application, the problems aren't as like, much exploration as they are just finding that answer to solve the problem, right? Um, but once again, even if it's not exploration, it's still super important that you show your work and motivation. Like you need, I can't stress this enough, for like every application, make sure you show all your work and then you don't leave anything out because that's what they're looking for. That's what they'll wanna be reading. Sumac also about 10 problems, this year was nine. There's like three easy short answer problems and then around seven full proof questions. This year, there were six full proof questions, if I recall correctly. Um, they're once again, varied topics. While this one isn't as much of similar, as similar to contest math as promise, it's not as like open-ended, if you will, or like vague as Ross, Ross's application. But once again, still super important that you show your work. And then one thing that I wanna add about SUMAC is that it's a bit interesting among these because it's the only program with online and in-person. So if you can't really like, if you don't have that time or like the means necessary to take like a big chunk of your summer and go to one of these programs, I'd recommend you try applying to SUMAC. 
because they have an online program and it is still pretty prestigious, even if it's online. And then QSIS among all these, compared to all these other math camps is very simple to apply. You just write a one page essay about why you think you're an ideal candidate for QSIS. So you wanna just show your qualifications and your interest in quantum computing, basically prove why show that I can learn what you're going to throw at me and I also want to learn this. So you just wanna convey that feeling, your passion about quantum computing. And then finally for SSP, this one, no math. Um, it's just several short answer questions and it's very simple to the supplementals of a college application actually. In fact, it's really good practice for college applications. So if you're applying in grade, if you're in grade 11 right now, you can try applying to this one and then it'll give you some good practice for what it's like to write college applications once you get to grade 12. There's three different strands there's astrophysics, biochemistry, and genomics. Astrophysics accepts the most, then it's biochemistry, and genomics accepts the least. Um, and then you kind of want to target your essays towards what you want to apply. So like, let's say you want to apply to astrophysics. Then first of all, there's even an essay question asking you, why do you want to apply to this program? And then you'll talk about, oh, I love physics ever since I was a child or something. And then maybe there's there'll be a question that asks like, what do you like doing in your pastime? And you want to somehow relate that to astrophysics. Maybe like, I like looking at the sky, I like pondering, like how can we do solve this sort of like physics problem or whatever, right? So make sure that you're just targeting your application for all of these, by the way, you're targeting at what you're right, you're telling what you write in order to appeal to the admissions officers. So some general, more general advice um, and stuff. All of these uh, different math camps, they all have short answer questions. So they'll all have questions like, why do you want to attend this camp or whatever? And then it'll be like, they'll talk a bit about their camp and it's like, this this appeal to you or something. And then you'll basically have to write these. Now it's not like as rigorous of short answers compared to like SSP because that's not only as short answers, right? Math camps still care more about the math that you do. But there's also some general information that you have to fill out on each of these applications, like your name, your age, and your contact info, all this, random general stuff, you have to do these. And then one other important thing is that a lot of these will actually ask for your report card. So make sure that you aren't asking your guidance counselor for your transcript the day before you have to apply. Ask them like weeks in advance. Same thing with letters of recommendation. Ask them as soon as you know you're going to apply because the more time you give your teachers, your guidance counselors, your mentors, your coaches, the better letter, letter of recommendation you write and the less, they won't be very happy with you if you're asking, hey, can I get, if you're asking them at like 10 p.m., hey, can I get my transcript when it's due like in two hours? They're probably not going to respond. So make sure you organize your time. Also, uh, most of these camps are selective. So if you get waitlisted or rejected, it's not, it just don't feel too down. It's not the end of the world. It's it, like, it would have been nice to go, but there's plenty of opportunities in the future, especially if you're in like grade 10 right now. Like you always have next year. It's hard to get accepted. That's a grade 10. Okay, so that's all for now. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me or Justin. Um, if, especially about Ross, you can ask me because I've been there for two years now. So I know quite a bit about the program. So just feel free to ask in the chat if you have questions. You can send directly to one of us or just in the chat.